airs here on Thursday afternoon, 3 Central Standard Time. And today I'm going to be talking about the food thyroid connection and of course answering all of your thyroid questions. So be sure to um, add your questions below. And something I want to do this time because we've had people joining us from all around the world. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us where you're tuning in from and you can either just say hi and I'll say hi back or you can go ahead and ask a question after that. So um, I, um, I'm not, I don't know if anybody's signed in yet, but I don't see any questions. So my staff will get them over to me. Last time we did this, having a little technical difficulty that I couldn't actually see your question showing up in the, in the bottom, but uh, hopefully they will be. Oh, wait, now I see it. Clarissa, hey, Clarissa from Riley. Hi, Kelly, how are ya? So I am seeing your comments and um, everything. Hi, Julie from Montana. So this is great. All right, so everybody, please introduce yourself, say where you're from, and then um, your questions. I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about the food thyroid connection, and then I'll get to answering your questions. And I have some staff right across, um, team members right across from me here, and they will be writing down all your questions, so um, I will get to those. First, I wanna say thank you to everybody, of course, who has pre-ordered the Thyroid Connection book. We are less than two weeks to go before the book is launched and live. All those, excuse me one second, reaching across the table. I have the real book here in my hands uh, today. And um, I think since we're talking about food today, I'll even walk you through some of the recipes. And um, it's you know really exciting. I showed this last week. The book, my first comment was just how beautiful it is because it's a matte finish as opposed to the um, pre-books that we were getting that were kind of glossy. But most importantly, look at how thick it is. Look at all that information that you're gonna get. It's over 400 pages with the references and I think it's like 300 and, let's see, how many pages of real information? 384 pages of real information. Um, I see my hubby's on now. Hi, Javier. Um, hi, Tammy from Pennsylvania. Hi, Monica from Springs, Colorado. So anyway, I'd, again, want to appreciate everybody who's pre-ordered a book. Don't forget, if you pre-order before September 27th, you will get um, a whole host of prizes one of which is a $10 gift card to my online store. And of course, you also are gonna get over $1,000 worth of downloads. Uh, and then you can enter to win a trip to come see me here in Austin, Texas. And five of us are gonna be hanging out for the day, having a wellness getaway for the day. And everything you hear while you're in Austin will be paid for. So please pre-order your book after September 27th when you can start to buy it in local bookstores. We'll no longer have uh, all of those prizes available to you. So it definitely behooves you to go ahead and order it now before September 27th. And I wanna announce that I've talked about, I think in every one of the Facebook Lives that I've created a very specific uh, multivitamin to go along with the book to support your thyroid and um, I was hoping that that would be ready by the time the book came out it's gonna be a little delayed but um, what we have is on my website if you sign up on my website uh, reserving your spot for one of those multivitamins you will get 10% off your purchase so you just go ahead and put in your email address we will reserve a bottle for you you do not need to buy it now but you'll get a coupon and get 10% off all right well let's to hop into um, into the food thyroid connection. So as you probably know, I've talked about with the thyroid that there are five, there are five root causes pretty much to all chronic diseases, but particularly thyroid dysfunction. And those can be, and of course I write about these in the thyroid connection, food, leaky gut, toxins, infections, and stress. And so today we're gonna to cover the food component of that. And really anybody that comes into my office, the first place we always start is changing the diet. I mean, now people have read my books and most people have come in already having changed their diet and we start at a different place, but still uh, we, we start by changing the diet. Hi, Wendy from Syracuse, New York. Okay, so in the book, I break up foods into sort of toxic and inflammatory foods, or let me back up and say that, you know, no matter what you're dealing with, the first thing I start with is changing the diet and healing the gut. And those two things go hand in hand, and we'll talk more about healing the gut next week uh, on uh, Thursday. Um, but the first step in healing your gut is changing your diet. So that's why they really go hand in hand. 
And so when we're changing your diet, the first thing I'm kind of looking at is toxic and inflammatory foods is how I break them up. And inflammatory foods, or let me say toxic foods, could be things like GMOs, they are things like caffeine and sugar, food additives, trans fats, food colorings, uh, preservatives, stuff like that. So many of those things I just, you know, hope that you get rid of out of your diet you know, rather indefinitely. Certainly, um, you know, I, I can't tell you that I absolutely never ever eat sugar, but I do minimize sugar and only eat it on very special occasions. And caffeine and I are not good friends. Um, I'm pretty, pretty type A without any caffeine, so me with caffeine is not usually a good sight. So um, I don't do caffeine, but I certainly don't mind if people have a cup of coffee a day or tea if that's something that they want. Now of course this is all after the program's over. So for the first 28 days in the book, it's a 28 day program to um, help restore your thyroid function and get your vitality back. And so what you'll be doing is removing these toxic foods and removing inflammatory foods. And you'll do it for 28 days and then I walk you through in the book how to gradually add the foods back in. Um, hi Jackie from Magnolia, Texas. So um, the inflammatory foods you may be familiar with by you know, having followed me and read articles or maybe you read the autoimmune solution, um, it's very similar. We're getting out gluten, we're getting out dairy, we're getting out grains and legumes in general, even non-gluten containing gr legume, uh, grains and legumes, nightshade vegetables, eggs. So these are the things, and then cruciferous vegetables when it comes to the thyroid, we're not completely removing those. We are simply just, um, we are making sure that they're getting cooked or down the line fermented and occasionally having some raw for sure, um, but not in the very beginning, okay? Hey Todd from California. Um, so let's kind of go over, and then of course we wanna make sure we're incorporating really good foods. Typically I don't go over all the foods that I want you to get rid of. I typically go over all the foods you'll be eating. So the foods that I have you eating are real whole foods and those are the periphery of the store such as real, um, such as uh, you know whole fruits and vegetables, preferably organic if possible, and of course um, doing organic and pasture raids, meats, fish, poultry, things like that. So there's an article that I wrote that I have on my blog, and of course I talk about these and other nutrients in my book, in the Thyroid Connection, kind of the top nutrients you need to make your thyroid to make your thyroid hormone and to convert your thyroid hormone and to get it into the cells. And those are iodine, selenium, zinc, and uh, iron. And so I really, in the book, we really focus on those nutrients. And so my registered dietitian, Brianne, Williams helped in creating the recipes and not only are we getting out the foods, the toxic and inflammatory foods, but most importantly, we're focusing on real whole foods that nourish your body and support your thyroid. So before I get back into those four foods that I just mentioned, what I'd like to do is to talk about, and you all are probably familiar with gluten and the problems with gluten and um, particularly with the thyroid, but I'd like to go over that here. So if there was only one food for you to give up, of course I have a few that I want you to, to, um, to lay off of for 28 days, but if there was only one food in the world to give up for your thyroid, it would be gluten. And let me explain why. Well, gluten, um, well, let me back up. A lot of people, if you're not familiar, will say, well, it's the bread of life and uh, we've eaten gluten for you know thousands of years. What's wrong with gluten? Well, what is wrong with gluten is that we now are eating a different type of wheat than what our ancestors ate. We've hybridized the gluten or we've hybridized the wheat, so it has far more gluten in it now than it did hundreds of years ago. So it's a completely different form of wheat. Um, there's some... Uh, commercial vendors that are trying to bring back the acorn wheat, the ancient wheat, and that still does have gluten in it. I get questions about that all the time. Is that safe for me to eat? Well, not if you have a gluten issue because there is gluten in that wheat. There's less, but there is gluten. Um, and then what we've done is we've deamianated the, we've deamianated the um, gluten, which means that it can be water soluble. And that's why we're finding it in all kinds of things now, from shampoos to Play-Doh, to uh, crab meat, to uh, sauces and lotions, you know, pretty much everywhere we're seeing gluten. And then what we do now on non-organic 
wheat is we spray it with Roundup. And that in and of itself has been uh, linked to leaky gut. So not only does the gluten or wheat cause leaky gut, but the Roundup in and of itself. In fact, that's one of the proposed theories of why there's been so much gluten sensitivity or this skyrocketing of gluten sensitivity. Uh, hi, Cindy, I'm glad you feel better without gluten. I do too. Um, so it's one of the reasons that we've had this skyrocketing of gluten sensitivity, many of us believe. So we've hybridized it, we've deaminated it, we spray it with Roundup, and then what's happened is we have leaky guts because we're being born by C-section, we're taking antibiotics, we're on acid blocking medications, we're stressed out, um, we live in a toxic world and a very stressed world, and then we have all of these infections. And so that is really leading to, and then we're eating so much gluten than we ever did because it's in everything. And that's really led to this epidemic proportion of people with gluten sensitivity and even celiac. You know, when I was in medical school, which actually wasn't that long ago, I went back to medical school later in life, um, we learned about celiac being this very rare disease and it's really not anymore. Um, so that is, you know, why gluten is such a problem nowadays. And what happens when we have this permeable, permeable intestinal permeability or leaky gut, the gluten it gets through your gut and our immune system sitting right there. It's one cell layer thick and it's sitting right there and our immune system goes, rah, rah, rah. you know, this is not supposed to be here. This is foreign, invade, attack, get rid of this stuff. And what we know through a process called molecular mimicry is that gluten looks very similar to the thyroid tissue. And so what happens is our immune system goes to attack the gluten. It can inadvertently attack the thyroid. And so that is really why those with thyroid dysfunction, whether it's autoimmune or not, I really recommend that you go gluten-free. And then there is an estimate that about 60% of people with a gluten issue have a casein issue. And, um, and, uh, and so I really recommend that they give up dairy as well for that reason. So that's why gluten and dairy are, for those of us with thyroid dysfunction, the two main foods I really want you to get to get out of your diet 100% rather indefinitely. And then of course the other foods I have you taking out of your diet during the 28 day program. And then at the end of the book, I show you how to add those fat foods back in and see what are your absolute no foods and what are ones you can tolerate once a week, once a month, a couple times a year, you know, whatever it is for you. And that's gonna be different for everybody. So let's get into, um, I just wanna remind you if you're watching this and you know anybody with a thyroid dysfunction to please share this video, to like it, to share it. Don't forget to comment. Please let me know where you're uh, watching from and my staff is um, taking notes vigorously. I see many of you all are you know, uh, posting questions so they're gonna pass those over to me very shortly here. So uh, like and share this video. Please pre-order your copy of the Thyroid Connection Summit, uh, Thyroid Connection uh, book and then that leads me to say that don't forget i also have the thyroid connection summit coming up october 23rd through 31st and that's a free online event and you can sign up for that the website should be up very soon okay so um in terms of foods that we want to be eating besides just eating organic um pasture raised uh, meats fish uh, and poultry or you know whatever sort of animal protein uh, also lots and lots of vegetables and uh, some fruit as well we want to be making sure that we're getting iodine in our diet and that is because uh, we need iodine in order to make our thyroid uh, hormone and convert our thyroid hormone and many of you all have probably heard on my previous Facebook lives and I've been doing podcasts all week long to promote the book that will be coming out here um, this week and next week. And I spend a lot of time, a burning question in everybody's mind is the iodine controversy. And of course I cover that in the book as well. So I'm not gonna go over that here, but I would say because we are being bombarded with all these other halides, many of us are iodine deficient. So where in your diet can you get uh, iodine? And that is in seaweed and in saltwater fish. Now you do need to be careful with the sea vegetables and of course seafood, um, you know, the source of where you're getting them. And, and a lot of the seaweed can be contaminated with radiation from Japan. So just be very careful. It's why, you know, I did create a multivitamin, the Myers Way multivitamin to be a companion to the book. And it does have 300 micrograms of, of iodine in, in the supplement. 
Okay, and then selenium, we need selenium. There's a lot of research showing um, reversal in Hashimoto's and lowering of antibodies in people once they got their selenium levels up. So I recommend about 200 micrograms of selenium. Of course, one of the best places that many people have probably heard that you can get selenium is in Brazil nuts. And that can be a really great place. There can be between 100 and 200 micrograms of selenium per nut. The thing is, it's not very standardized because all the nuts are different sizes and nobody really eats one Brazil nut a day. Um, you know, I kind of debated in the book whether I was going to have everybody eat one to two Brazil nuts, even though I request that people give up nuts, at least temporarily in the book, because how they can be irritating of the gut for many people and we're trying to heal your gut. Uh, so I opted not to do that and leave that out of the book, but Brazil nuts can be a really great place that to get selenium. Just be careful with that, that you don't overdo it. And of course, make sure you're getting an organic Brazil nut. But of course, meat contains selenium, fish and, and shellfish also contain selenium. And again, the multi that I have formulated has what I consider to be a daily recommended dose for those with thyroid dysfunction, which is 200 micrograms of selenium. Um, Thank you, Susie, for thanking me and appreciating me for uh, my summits and everything. So the autoimmune summit that I hosted back in 2014 was um, one of the most highly attended summits, um, even up until today. And so I have an all-star cast, um, some repeat people from the autoimmune summit, but lots of new people as well um, that are really uh, leaders in the area of thyroid dysfunction and functional medicine. So I encourage everybody at scientists, physicians, naturopaths, pharmacists, so I encourage everybody to, to listen to that summit. It will be a free online event. Um, okay, so then we have zinc. And zinc, you know, many of us are zinc deficient, uh, you know, oddly enough. Um, and zinc is also very important for that conversion of T4 to T3. And, you know, a great place to get zinc, as most of you all may know, is oysters. Now, oysters can be a little contaminated from the Gulf, and maybe you don't like oysters like I don't. Even growing up in New Orleans, even a fried oyster I never liked. I mean, maybe if you fried it enough, I could get it down, but um, raw oysters was never a fan. So maybe not the best source for you, but mussels. Spinach, one of my favorite sources to get, um, to get zinc. And, of course, grass-fed beef and turkey. Now, as I'm saying all this, I, I you know, always hope that everybody's getting the nutrients um, that we need for our thyroid and for our body to function and thrive at an optimal level through their diet. But for many people, that can be very difficult these days. You know, our food supply has really been altered. The soil is not what it used to be. Um, there are many studies showing, even with organic food, uh, that that the nutrient content of them now is very is lower than it used to be and so for a lot of people particularly once you've gotten in a place of having a health crisis um, do need supplementation which is again why i formulated the myers way multivitamin uh, to really make up for these deficiencies it's not to be in place of you eating spinach or grass-fed beef or turkey it's really just to um to help sup you know, supplement which is what a supplement is but to to help bridge that gap and then, of course, iron. You know, many people, particularly women that I see, um, their iron levels are very low. And, and classically, a conventional doctor is checking something called a hemoglobin and hematocrit or an H and H. And you have to have a severe amount of blood loss for that to actually be low. What they need to be checking is a ferritin, and I talk about this in the thyroid connection. And you want that level to be around 50 to 100 to prevent hair loss. And uh, there are very few women that I see in uh, sort of their 20s through 50s that, that don't have low iron stores. Ferritin is the marker of iron storage. And that's because, you know, we menstruate and have a period every month, and so we're losing blood. And then if you're like me, who was a vegetarian for 27 years, um, then, you know, it, it is likely that you could have low iron. So, I and then people with digestive issues, gluten sensitivity, they're not absorbing the iron even when they're eating the iron. So, um, we will have a multi. We have a multi without iron and we'll have a multi with iron as well. Or you can take some separate iron um, to get those ferritin levels up. And again, you want to get those checked and have those around uh, 50 to 100. And of course, great places for those are beef and chicken liver. And, you know, some people may not find that that's uh, something that they want to eat, although uh, Brianne created an incredible recipe using liver in the book. First time using that. And we got to keep bacon this time in the book. We're all so excited about that. I had recipes in the autoimmune solution with bacon, and they 
the editors wanted me to take those out but luckily this time we got to keep the bacon in our recipes so um, so of course red meat is a good source of iron and then spinach is another great source of iron so spinach is our one of our superfoods here and we have a lot of it in the thyroid connection so before I continue on, um, I would like to again say thank you to everybody who has pre-ordered the Thyroid Connection. Ask everybody to share and like this video if you know anybody with thyroid dysfunction. And then to let you know, I'm gonna get to your questions in just a moment. And to also what I wanted to do is just randomly open up the book here and maybe just kind of read to you or a couple of the recipes because um, really that's we got so many good um, reviews on Amazon for the autoimmune solution and the recipes people telling us they felt like they were eating out of a spa and that is the case again with this book I mean we had a couple of recipes that were just top top recipes from the autoimmune solution that we put back in this book but only I think it's about two or three the rest are all brand new recipes again really focused on um, healing your thyroid and providing the nutrients that you need for that so, um, okay, so I just literally opened the book and um, I'll just read off uh, the three that I'm seeing on this page. Lucky us, we landed on the liver one. <laughs> Beef liver with bacon and rosemary. Then we have grass-fed steak with thyme-roasted root vegetables, which is great. And then this is one of my favorite ones, which is sauteed cranberry kale with bacon over sweet potatoes. Let's see what else we have. Um, we have creamy fruit pops. We have a decadent cocoa pudding. Of course, let me get to the um, smoothies because that's one of my favorite parts about this book is that between the autoimmune solution in this book, we found what we now have is the Myers Way Paleo Protein, which is approved for any autoimmune paleo type program and of course approved during the Myers Way in both the autoimmune solution and the thyroid connection. Uh, but we didn't have that for the first book. So now we have smoothies in this book, which is amazing. Um, so we have blueberries and cream smoothie. My mouth is watering here. Pear parsley smoothie, cinnamon coca smoothie, which is one of my favorite ones. We have a host of juices, salads. We have a pineapple taco salad with grass-fed beef, uh, wild-caught Scallop spinach salad with pomegranate vinaigrette. And I'll just read one or two more here. Um, sweet potato and parsnip clam chowder. And then this is another one of my favorite ones. Um, kelp noodle stir fry with chicken and veggies. And then this was an all time favorite and this one did come from the autoimmune solution. I think this is our top recipe. Um, we haven't made this one in a while, Javier, but we used to live off of this one, which is the coconut chicken curry. So, uh, okay, I'll read one more just because this is another one of my favorites. Turkey meatballs over spaghetti squash with Tuscan kale pesto. So seriously, if for no other reason, I mean, even if you didn't want to know about the thyroid, just getting this book for the recipes is well worth it. Um, the, if I can make a plug for the autoimmune solution as well, I don't think we talked that up as much last time with that book, but the number of recipes in that book, it was practically a cookbook on its own. But maybe that will be book number three. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is I am going to get into uh, I'm going to get into your questions and just remind you all to please like and share this um, with anybody that you think might have thyroid dysfunction. Remember to pre-order your book before September 27th in order to get all the free goodies and a chance to win the trip to come hang out with me and your $10 gift card um, to be used in my store. And you can use it to buy some of the paleo protein powder to go with your shakes for the rest uh, for the book and um, we'll get started so let's go here okay so my first question is from Alicia does it matter if you're hypo or hyper do you follow the same so this is a great question Alicia and I um, again have been interviewed for quite a number of podcasts recently and this comes up and so what I'd like to remind people is particularly uh, when we are dealing with hypo and hyperthyroidism, most thyroid dysfunction is autoimmune in nature. So it's Hashimoto's or Graves. Not everybody, but most people. And so what that means is it's a problem in your immune system, not your thyroid. It's manifesting in your thyroid, but it, the problem actually lies in your immune system. 
So given that, the fundamental program of finding the root cause, you know, looking at the diet, leaky gut, toxins, infections, and stress, that fundamental part of the program is going to be the same because we're dealing with the immune system, not the thyroid. Now, for hypo and hyper, there are some differences and then how we actually execute part of the program is very different. So for those with hyperthyroidism or Graves, we have um, a set of thyroid calming herbs that will be used either in addition to if you're on some other sort of medication from your regular doctor to stop thyroid production or slow it down, or to be, of course, hopefully used in lieu of those medications. And then for hypothyroidism, if you're someone who needs to be on supplemental thyroid hormone, then you know I give you the tools to work with your physician to make sure you're getting the right testing, the right type, and the right dose of that supplemental thyroid hormone. So, but a lot of, um, and then of course with those with Graves' disease, there's added things besides the calming herbs because your your um, metabolism is on overdrive. And so there's things like L-carnitine, CoQ10, uh, some fiber that we know binds up thyroid hormones. So those things are also incorporated into the plan for those with hyperthyroidism. So again, when we're dealing with Graves and Hashimoto's problem of the immune system that's manifested in the thyroid, so we're working on the immune system and that part of the program is the same, but then how we execute it based on hyper or hypothyroidism is very different. And there is a plan for both. So this is not a book just for Hashimoto's. This is very much a book for someone with Graves or hyperthyroidism, as well as cyst, nodules, cancer, post-cancer, thyroidectomy, post-radiation uh, from Graves. And of course, all of those people who have been told that their thyroid labs are completely normal and their thyroid is not their problem, this is the book for you as well. Okay, so Julie, I have Hashimoto's autoimmunity. How do I know when my leaky gut is healed? I pre-ordered your book. Thank you so much, Julie, for pre-ordering my book. I appreciate that. So, um, you know, there are multiple ways you can know whether your gut is healed. One is there is certainly testing for leaky gut, um, So, but you'd need to probably get to a functional medicine practitioner for that. If you are having any digestive symptoms and those have resolved, and then your autoimmunity, seeing your autoimmunity or your thyroid antibodies, your TPO antibodies coming down is a great sign. And then, you know, many people have different um, uh, ways to know that their gut is leaky. Maybe they have allergies, they have eczema, they have rash, they have acne. You know, you see improvements in these outward manifestations that people aren't really seeing are leaky gut. I mean, the, the only way to 100% know is to get tested, but I'll just let you know in my clinic, I don't do a lot of leaky gut testing. I just assume if you've come to my clinic with a diagnosis of autoimmunity or thyroid dysfunction, you have a leaky gut. And as those things start to improve, your symptoms go away, your antibodies begin to reverse, um, and you report feeling better, we're just assuming that the gut has in fact healed. But there is definitely testing that you can get if you want to know 100% for sure that is typically done by a functional medicine doctor. I don't think that conventional medicine is really um, utilizing that quite yet. Not until they get their zonulin blocker drugs and patented it selling for thousands of dollars a month, then they'll probably have a test to go along with that. <laughs> okay, uh, Jonas, I removed gluten, but I didn't notice any difference. Can I add it back in? Uh, well, Jonas, you're welcome to do anything that you would like to do. I'm not the police over here, but um, if you have a thyroid dysfunction because of what I just stated about the molecular mimicry, I would not advise adding it back in. Often when people come to me and they don't notice something, you know, uh, they don't notice anything when they gave up gluten, they A, of course, may not have a gluten issue. Uh, B, it could be that they gave up gluten, but they were eating enough other grains that contain gliadins, or they were eating cross-reactive foods like corn that, or dairy that could cross-react in your body and look like gluten. They were eating a lot of gluten-free products that contain some minimal amounts of gluten in them. Or it could be that you also have something like candida or yeast or a parasite, or you have heavy metals 
and it's really not until you get those things out maybe they're your primary problem and gluten is less of a problem so of course if you don't have thyroid dysfunction and you just were removing gluten for the you know you don't have autoimmunity or thyroid dysfunction and you just removed gluten to see how you felt and you didn't notice anything and you want to add it back in you know that's totally your prerogative but if you have a diagnosis of autoimmunity or thyroid dysfunction because of the molecular mimicry and the research out there I would not advise adding it back in if you're not feeling better I would advise of course picking up a copy of the thyroid connection or potentially seeing a functional medicine doctor to dig deeper to find the root causes of why you're not feeling better Okay, Deborah, I went gluten and dairy-free. I eat organic, take mega doses of vitamins, removed fluoride, and still have antibodies. What else can I do? Um, well, I mean, I think picking up a copy of the book is a great idea because it's really going to walk you through. You know, occasionally I get these people say, I did the diet and I didn't notice anything. Well, the diet is part of it. And for some people, it's a huge part. And for other people, it's not as big of a factor. You really have to look at all the factors. Have you addressed all the factors? And sometimes for people, it's a matter of addressing all the factors all at one time. Because I get people coming in from all different practitioners and they've seen one and did the diet and they saw somebody else and did the gut and they saw somebody else and did heavy metals, but they never did all the stuff at one time. So I'd certainly advise you in picking up a copy of the Thyroid Connection and doing all of them. And um, hey, just real quick, quick, excuse me, can you all not erase the questions until like I've totally moved on to the next one? Because I might want to refer back to it. Cool, thanks. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so I kind of forgot the whole rest of your question because I got off on a tangent talking. But um, so if your antibodies haven't come back down, Thank you for adding that back. So if your antibodies haven't come back down, you know, stress is huge. Stress is huge for so many people. I know it's big for me and it's certainly one that many people don't talk about. I have a whole chapter this time about stress. So you could be doing all the right stuff and if you're super stressed out, you're keeping your gut leaky and um, you know, that could be your problem. The other thing is that, you know, you said that you took out gluten and dairy. There's a whole host of other foods during the 28 day program that I recommend that you take out. I don't know what mega doses of vitamins are. Um, you know, hopefully those are good for you and not causing any problems for you. And, um, but I would look at the other factors, heavy metals. I would look at, you know, potentially toxic mold. I would look at, um, other foods that are cross reacting with gluten and, um, stress and infections so pick up a copy of the thyroid connection and you know work with your doctor i think it will be helpful to you for sure okay so now we have veronica do you recommend iodine and selenium supplements for both hyper and hypo yeah i'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because i think i've gotten lots of questions about iodine and i definitely address this in the book and y'all be sure to tune in our newsletter tomorrow is going to go out with a sort of recap of all the podcasts that i've been on this week that will um, you know, give you links to all of those. And I'm sure we'll do that again next week because there are a lot more podcasts coming out next week and the following week um, or interviews. And I can tell you, no two have been the same. So we send them over a group of questions and nobody's asked the questions that I sent over. So I've had some really great conversations with a lot of different people. And I can tell you that literally every podcast that I've been on has been different. However, everyone has asked me about iodine. So just very quickly, we are living in an iodine deficient state because we're not getting it in our diets. And then we are bombarding our system with bromide, chloride, and fluoride, and it is displacing iodine in the body. So everybody's an individual. And, um, you know, there are certainly some people recommend mega doses of iodine. I don't do that. I recommend micro dosages of iodine, and that's what's in my supplement. You have to try it on yourself, but I've had very, 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 very few people ever have a reaction to the micro gram dosages of iodine that I'm recommending. Um, but most conventional doctors will tell you to avoid iodine if you have thyroid dysfunction. So I, I disagree with that, but everybody's an individual. Okay. So, um, Monica, can you go into remission with Hashimoto's disease, even if it's hereditary? For example, my mother has Hashimoto's disease and my daughter developed it after pregnancy. So that's a great question on two fronts. One, um, as I wrote about in the autoimmune solution, that we know that 25% of all autoimmune diseases are hereditary and 75% are environmentally influenced. So I don't know that it's 
purely genetics for you and your mom and your daughter. Um, it could be something as simple as your mom had heavy metals and you got heavy metals and you transferred them onto your daughter. It could be something as simple as everyone has a gluten sensitivity as well. So there's certainly environmental factors that are um, playing into this. And if your daughter had a daughter, um, I would definitely you know, get her on a program very similar to what I have in the Thyroid Connection or the Autoimmune Solution because not only are these programs to help reverse you, uh, your condition, but also to prevent the condition. And so the earlier she can start, and if your daughter had a girl, you know, uh, there there's studies in the medical literature about not adding in gluten until the first year of life, and that's supposed to reduce your risk of getting celiac. I'd recommend not probably entering it at all into her diet. Um, and certainly for the boy, the chances are a little bit lower because w more women than men get thyroid, you know, uh, dysfunction, but still, hey, Christian, my little sister's on. Good to see you on. Glad you're not at work. Um, so um, I definitely recommend that, you know, that she potentially not give the, the child gluten, but remission. So what is the definition of remission? I would call that reversal and reversing autoimmunity can happen for sure. I see it day in and day out. And that's what the autoimmune solution was about. When we're talking about thyroid dysfunction, um, it is a vital organ. And if you have had enough damage to that organ, you may need to be on supplemental thyroid hormone if it took you years to get uh, diagnosed and it's been years since you got diagnosed or me, I had my thyroid ablated, I have no thyroid. So, um, so I can't get that back. So if there's been enough damage, if you catch it when it's in this inflammatory state, you can stop it and reverse it and possibly get off thyroid hormone. But if you're catching it years and years later and it's gotten beyond inflammation, but to actual damage, we can't regrow that tissue. So you would still need to be on supplemental thyroid hormone, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't still look at the root cause Certainly genetic seems to play a role with you and your family, but it is not the only cause. So I would advise you to read the thyroid connection and look at the five other root causes and work to fix those so that you don't end up with another uh, autoimmune condition. And certainly your daughter can um, you know, discuss this with her children and get on a program to helpfully prevent them from ever being in your boat and your mother's boat and their mother's boat. Okay. So then we have Debbie. Um, what's your favorite water filter for removing toxins, including fluoride? Um, I like to go with any time that I can support local companies. I'm here in Austin, Texas, so I use Aquasana. Um, so, uh, and we have a code, I believe it's Dr. Myers 30 or just Dr. Myers? Just Dr. Myers, and you'll get 30% off anything that you order from them if you choose to do that. Um, you know, you can do reverse osmosis, but then that, of course, takes out a lot of the good minerals as well. Um, but, you know, I personally use Aquasana. Um, Angly, my, my TSH is uh, in optimal range, and my T3 and T4 are normal. My doctor didn't check reverse T3, but I'm always cold. I also have very dry skin, psoriasis, falling out hair. Uh, now, less now that I follow your autoimmune solution diet. Awesome. Could it be a thyroid problem? Yes, and you also wrote down that your T4 and T3 are in normal range, so I don't know if he checked totals or if he checked freeze, and just because they're in normal range doesn't mean they're in optimal range. So definitely um, check out you know a copy of the Thyroid Connection because as opposed to the autoimmune solution, I wasn't talking specifically about any one autoimmune condition, and here I am talking very specifically about the thyroid, so I have the um, optimal reference range is listed and all the labs. But yes, even if you, let's say that you did get your free T3 checked and it was even an optimal range, not just normal range, if they didn't check a reverse T3, you could still have a very high reverse T3, which means you have more of a break than you do gas, and that could be leading to all of the symptoms that you're describing. And again, even when people even fall in optimal range, if they're still describing a lot of hypothyroid symptoms, then I certainly work with them and consider increasing the dosages of their supplemental thyroid hormone because it, I uh, love you too, Christian. Um, I um, hope, you know, I like to listen to the patient. The patient really gives me more information than the labs do and it's always looking at the labs 
and listening to the patient. And usually over all of it, the patient wins out over the labs. So you can also get a copy of the book and bring it to him. Um, okay, so just wanted to remind you guys that if your doctor will not run, run your lab test for you or will not run the, um, all of them for you, uh, we have, I have partnered with mylabsforlife.com. I don't get anything out of you ordering your labs from them, but they have kindly put up a page on their website that says Dr. Myers. It's still in the works, but there is something up now. And that has all the labs that I recommend, both for thyroid, for nutritional testing, for stool testing. And then if your doctor will not, you know, review those with you, we have Liz, my wellness coach, who will be happy to review any of those. And of course, you know, the stool test and things like that, the functional lab test, if your doctor is not familiar with that, Liz can help you out with that. Or you can come see um, me or one of my uh, nurse, my nurse practitioner or my other physician that work in my clinic. So um, we can help you out with that. So, you know, I didn't want to write a book and know that you needed to go get labs and not have a place for you to go get those labs. Also wanted to remind everybody that um, I've created a new multivitamin that goes along with the book. We had hoped it'd be here in time for the book, but it's going to be about a week delayed. So if you've bought the book and you're interested in getting the multivitamin, if you just go back to my website, we have a page set up that if you put in your email address and your name, um, we will reserve a bottle for you. You don't have to pay for it, but we'll reserve you a bottle and you'll also get emailed a 10% coupon um, that can be used uh, towards that purchase. So um, that's super exciting. And I um, wanted to remind everybody about the Thyroid Connection Summit that I have coming up, the free online event where I've interviewed over 35, it's probably closer to 40 thyroid experts now. Uh, that will be October 24th through October 31st. And of course, remind you all to pick up a copy of the Thyroid Connection book before September 27th and you'll get all kinds of free prizes. Um, I've said it a million times, so I won't go over them all here. And after the 27th, it will be available in any bookstore. And I love when people support their local bookstores. So pick up a copy there, but all of the prizes and free gifts will be gone at that point. Um, so Paris, my doctor told me that radiation wakes up my thyroid every time I go for an x-ray or CAT scan or anything like that. Should I cover my neck and told not to drink coffee and not use my microwave. Okay, well, I'm not a fan of microwaves <laughs> in general, so if you can avoid them, that's always best. Um, but I don't think that the x-ray machine or the CAT scan is going to wake up your thyroid. Um, yes, it's radiation that can damage your thyroid um, if unless the x-ray is at your thyroid or the CAT scan is at your neck, um, you're probably far enough away in some sense, I mean, we're all getting radiation. I mean, one of the most, you know, biggest ways to get radiation is to take an airplane ride and nobody ever talks about that. So, you know, we can't go around our life living in fear, but certainly if you're having radiation directed, particularly directly at your thyroid, that is not a good thing. That's how all those people, I think it's like my mother's age or older, you know, ended up with thyroid cancer because they um, were trying to radiate children's thymus glands to shrink them and your thymus gland is right over your thyroid and then all these people ended up with thyroid cancer. So it certainly is um, is an issue, uh, but as long as the radiation is is not there, they they I think you're probably okay. Um, and of course, iodine can help you uh, protect yourself against radiation as well. Okay, then we have Veronica. My daughter's 11 with Graves' disease. I'm very sorry to hear about that. That's you know really tough to be dealing with a child with an autoimmune condition. Do you see children with this often? I don't see children with Graves' disease very often. In fact, I mean, I don't, Graves is, I mean, I wouldn't call it rare, but in the thyroid world, it is more rare than Hashimoto's. So I don't see a ton of Graves. I certainly have seen Graves and thankfully has ha have helped many people reverse their Graves' disease um, and talk about this on multiple of the podcasts as well. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I don't know where she is in the stages of her graves, but hope that you can get a copy of my book, The Thyroid Connection, and um, work with, you know, the book and her doctor and use the thyroid calming herbs. Um, I would really, you know, I say this to anybody, I can't offer her specific advice, but certainly being 11 and still growing 
would really, really shy away from doing the radioactive iodine, particularly with her reproductive system growing. They don't really talk to you about that, but there's, you know, iodine, well, receptors everywhere, but a lot of iodine also in the ovaries and um, the breast tissue. So I would, if she absolutely cannot get this under control in another way, I would opt for surgery. And I recommend surgery over the radiation pretty much for everybody if they can. You have to talk to your own doctor about the risks um, of that individually, but um, certainly as a child, I would do my best to not do the radiation. Um, Janie, uh, Janine, I'm sorry, uh, Jeannie, uh, I've been on AIP diet for four months with few reintroductions. We are now pregnant. Congratulations. Should I not reintroduce any foods? Is it not safe while pregnant? Um, well, you're not missing out on nutrients as long as you're taking a good multivitamin and making sure that you're really eating a nutrient dense diet so you're not missing out on any I mean you definitely want to make sure you're getting your good fats getting plenty of carbs uh, for the baby to keep your you know and, and keeping your blood sugar stable but if the, you removed foods because you were having an immune reaction to those foods now is not the time that you want to add them in there is research showing that these immune antibodies can actually cross over the placenta so I, I always advise people if they you know have a gluten issue or dairy issue and they're having cravings during pregnancy to please get gluten-free crackers, um, you know, alternatives, because that's not the time that you want to be reintroducing a food um, that you are having um, an antibody reaction to. I mean, already you have a foreign object in you, which is the baby, um, and those antibodies can cross over to them. So if you, you know, need a gluten-free cracker or something like that because you're having morning sickness, I mean, I don't see the harm in adding in some rice or something that's probably pretty benign, but I would not take this opportunity to add foods like gluten or dairy that you perhaps know that you have an immune reaction to. So that's a great question um, and, and, you know, one that I get asked a lot. Um, Julie, what do you think about the TPO antibody normal range 0 to 35? You know, every lab is different. Um, our lab used to have that same reference range and then they reduced it down to 9. I don't really know. They, they didn't change the, sometimes when they reduce things, they're actually changing the, um, the um, what do I want to say, the uh, measurement, like uh, from nanograms to micrograms or to picograms and so it's really just moving a decimal place over but they moved it at our lab to less than nine i can't you know i mean i can't really speak to that if that's the reference range that your lab is always used i mean if you have an antibody at 33 and suddenly they increase the reference range to 35 and you're negative whereas before you weren't I mean, even at 35 or 33, I would be concerned that something was brewing. If you have a, a TPO antibody level of five, well, I probably wouldn't worry about it because it's negative on, I mean, not, not worry about it, but you know, it's, it's low. So you have to take these things kind of looking at them at what the ranges are. So, um, okay, well, um, again, I think um, we're gonna wrap it up here very soon. Just wanted to thank everybody again who joined us today. We'll be doing another one of these live next Thursday. And then of course, when the book launches on the 27th, we'll be doing one every day at three central standard time um, and answering your questions. Um, please pick up a copy of your the Thyroid Connection, pre-order it before September 27th. Thank you to everybody who's already had a purchase and made a purchase. Join us for the Thyroid Summit, October 24th through 31st. And um, yes, and there's one more question I'm being told. Oh, we're doing giveaways next week. Oh, okay. And then next week there is one more question from Kelly. If you want to write that down, I'll answer it. Um, there is, and then next week we're going to start doing some giveaways on the Facebook Live. So just some products um, that I enjoy that we'll be giving away. We may even give away some copies of the book signed copies of the book so um you know be sure to join us next week and anytime that you can and of course these will always be up after uh after it's over and you can watch them at your leisure um okay kelly my son has celiac disease and uh, there was one on there about um about a paleo diet and aip and it being difficult it's sometimes hard if we miss the um Kelly, well, it's from this, it's, uh, I feel overwhelmed by the autoimmune paleo diet, even just the basic paleo. It seems so restrictive. All you are eating is fruit, vegetables, and meat, right? I don't eat seafood. 
Okay, well, um, what I recommend is setting up a, I can answer this one too, I was setting up a wellness coaching session with, with Liz. I mean, we deal with this day in and day out. I mean, you know, fortunately in my clinic, or unfortunately, I see people who are really at their wit's end and willing to do anything. So, you know, I think when you're in that boat and you're seeing, you know, really debilitating diseases coming down the line, you're kind of really, you know, motivated to do anything that it takes. Um, but if you can't do the full thing, we want to meet you where you are. I want you to be successful. So I think Liz would be a great resource for you to work with her to figure out, you know, what what do you think you can do right now? I mean, sometimes people come to my clinic and all they can handle is gluten, giving up gluten. And then they're willing to do dairy. And then we move into other things. So the point isn't, you know, in theory, yes, it's all or nothing, you know, to really have the most impact. But we want you to be successful. So if you can't do the whole shebang right off the bat, then you know let's let's start slow. And I think Liz would be a great resource. And also for all of you, anybody reading the book or going through any of my programs, I have a free online community where Liz takes part, my nutritionists do, I answer questions on occasion, and it's full of people from all around the world doing the program. So that would be another great place for you to go and join our free community. And that's just amymyersmd.com backslash community and anybody is welcome to do that if you're going through any of our programs it's a great place we have thousands of people in there people who've been doing this for years they're helping answer questions we you know highlight a, a member every month who's been very active and give away free gifts so it's you know completely free and just a service that we want so that you all have community and have um, support while going through this because for some people these changes can be very easy and for other people they can be very daunting and certainly you know when you have children or you're trying to make changes either for a whole family or, or worse you're trying to make changes for yourself because your whole family is resistant and they won't do it with you um, we do call it the Myers way because we'd like it to be a way of life a way of life not only for you but your entire family and so we hope to get them all on board I mean I remember the joy that I had you know I used to go home um, at holidays and my family would make their meals and I was making a separate meal and we'd sit down to eat and eventually um, once my dad and stepmother and everybody got on board we now have Myers way you know Christmas and Thanksgiving and so it's it's really you know it's really wonderful and they're you know part of my family doesn't need to eat that way but they've just you know jumped on board and the you know other half of us do need to eat that way so it's really great when you can get to that place so I have one um, just real quick Patricia I see your um, question about being vegan and I was a vegetarian for 27 years and I, I don't think for most people that a vegan diet or vegetarian diet um, really does provide the nutrients that you need when you've gotten to a place of having autoimmunity or thyroid dysfunction so you know I like to think of it as food as medicine of course you are welcome to do anything you want um, what I'd recommend in the book in the autoimmune solution we had a seafood seven-day meal plan and the thyroid connection um, you know we don't have a separate plan but what you can do is make the meals and not eat the meat um, but you'd want to be very cognizant about cognizant about trying you know to get your proteins the reason for that is many of the proteins that you're eating as a vegan are coming from a grain and legume source and there are two potential problems with that one is those contain uh, gliadins in them that and also um, lectins that can disrupt your gut and cause a leaky gut as well as um, many people who are in this boat have uh, infections like SIBO small bowel bacterial overgrowth or candida and even though those are higher quality carbs full of proteins and other nutrients they ultimately are carbs and that is what these infections feed off of so people who have come and are vegans do find it challenging not impossible but challenging um, to get well and I find it challenging as well because Oh, some of them don't get well and you know it's hard to say whether it was the diet or something else so you know I, I really try to think of you know have people think about this is food as medicine and again this is coming from a woman who didn't eat re red meat for 27 years and can remember the day that she had her first bite of red meat and thought that she was gonna get absolutely sick and I was like hamburger where's the hamburger I want another hamburger it's funny because my stepmother who was a vegetarian for 35 years before she changed to support my dad and his autoimmune journey the same thing happened with her so I would just invite you to perhaps think about it as food as medicine and 
you know, and, um, and, and consider potentially, you know, eating meat. But again, that's your prerogative and I don't, I'm not making any judgments of anybody and I know people don't eat meat for all kinds of reasons, religious reasons. Um, I don't really buy into the environmental reason because I'm not advocating, you know, uh, sort of USD agriculture state of, of meat and, and, you know, eggs. I'm, I'm recommending pasture raised, grass fed, um, which really doesn't have as, as uh, large an impact on the environment. In fact, it has less of an impact because most of the soy and corn that's being grown and destroying rainforests is going to do feedlot of, you know, feeding of, of the animals. Okay, this really is my last question, or second to last question is, um, Teresa, what's a good probiotic for SIBO? We, um, on my website, uh, we have a uh, soil-based probiotic uh, that I recommend for those with SIBO. And uh, that is called Prescript Assist. Okay, so Kelly, this is absolutely my last question this time. Where are we in time? Oh, I managed to make it to another hour. I was only gonna do 30 minutes this time, but I love answering your questions. So, um, okay, so Kelly, my son has celiac and Hashimoto's. He's now, he is 17, now I'm diagnosed when he was eight. Hard to keep him on track with eating, nor do I want him on thyroid meds the rest of his life, but they say he will be. Well. Um, couple things. One, he's in that, you know, um, interesting age where you may still be financially supporting him, but he is exerting his independence um, as a young man and perhaps going off to college. And this often can be the uh, most difficult age to deal with, even more difficult than young children, um, because, you know, they're kind of really under your guidance and he's asserting himself. So at some point you do just have to let go and say, I've done the best that I can as a parent and you know, I'm giving him information and this is his life to live. Now, um, as to being on thyroid medication the rest of his life, I first of all don't call it thyroid medication, I call it supplemental thyroid hormone because he's had nine years of damage to his thyroid and how many before that because he had celiac. So what I would say is there probably has already been enough damage to his thyroid that he may need to be on supplemental thyroid hormone. And I do not consider that a failure. I do not consider that a problem. It's like a type one diabetic being on insulin. It's like me taking supplemental thyroid hormone. If I didn't do it, I would die. So I would take that thought out of your mind that yes, he probably will need to be on supplemental thyroid hormone. I think the book, The Thyroid Connection, will help him and you determine is he on the right dose and the right form and is, are his labs optimal? How does he feel? And certainly would recommend if he can't do the whole program to at least be 100% gluten free and for him to really understand that as a celiac. My thought is a celiac, he probably has some pretty severe symptoms when he eats gluten. I recommend he could be dairy free as well, but you know, that's, you know, if he's not going to do it, he's not going to do it. And so, uh, Again, I would just do your best to say that you have, you know, hopefully raised a fine young man and that you've done your best and buy him a copy of the book that he can read himself. I find when people, you know, believe it themselves and they, they take the initiative. My younger sister, half sister, um, was just on. I don't know if she's still here or not, but, um, you know, we had some of the same issues as she was going off to college with gluten and things like that. And she really took ownership of that and even, you know, worked with the college to make sure that they had, you know, appropriate gluten-free foods for her. So, um, it's, it's a, it's a tough age, but just know that you've done your best and he's not being failed by you or anybody else by being on supplemental thyroid hormone and to definitely be gluten free. Okay, everybody, don't forget to like and share this with anybody that you know that may have thyroid dysfunction. Um, don't forget to pick up a copy of The Thyroid Connection. Who is the book for? It's for anybody with known thyroid dysfunction, hypo, hyper, cyst, thyroid nodules, cancer, and as well as anybody post thyroidectomy and anybody who thinks that uh, Christian said she's still here and she's gluten free and dairy free. So that's great. Um, so, uh, so 
we um, and also of course all those people who have been told that they do not have thyroid dysfunction that may have thyroid dysfunction even though their labs are normal so pick up a copy of the book for yourself for a friend don't forget to pre-order by September 27th to get all your free gifts and I will see all of you all hopefully and more next week the same time at uh, 3 Central Standard Time on Thursday we'll have some giveaways and don't forget if you want to reserve your spot for the new thyroid um, Myers Way thyroid multi head over to my website put in your name and email address and you'll get a 10% off coupon for when those come in to be used to purchase your uh, your supplement okay thanks everybody talk to y'all next week take care bye bye